And we are live. Hey guys, welcome to Mr. Maple Show. I'm Matt. Hey guys, I'm Brian, and we're live at 11.05 this morning here at the Mr. Maple Nursery. You know we got to be corny and rhyme. Like, That's there's right. No, there's it's this 10 just, at 10. It's, you know, there's Fun Flower Friday. Yeah. You know, it's Showcase Saturdays. <laughs> it wouldn't be us if we didn't go live at 11.05. Oh, man. Yeah, we've got, uh, you know, uh, we wanted to kind of jump on here this morning and talk a little bit about some weather some crazy weather patterns coming through. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of the country is experiencing that right now. Thinking about it, it's right. approaching or they're in it now. Um, just kind of depends on where you're at. But Yeah, feel free to throw your comments in the chat. I've got it up right here live in front of me as well. Yeah, uh, We'll be going over some different things. Um, you know, just appreciate you guys hopping on here. We've been making a lot of new content. We'll wait just a minute before we get into the cold snap stuff yeah. to give uh, a few more people a chance to get into the chat. And, uh, guys, I hope you had a good weekend. Um, you know, we're preparing for a little bit of cold this week, uh, especially here in North Carolina. We're in zone 6B here in western North Carolina. And uh, we're going to be taking a little bit of preemptive measures to uh, to cover some of our plants and do a few things. And we'll get into everything we're doing. We do have a great instructional video. I know Brian shared that in our group today, too, from yeah. last year. Uh, you know, same thing happens every year. It's one of the things, you yeah. know, uh, the, the most common question is people ask me, like, hey, do I need to do anything? And I always say, if you're asking that, you already know the answer. Yeah. And it's probably yes. It's one of those ounce prevention is worth a pound of cure, my dad's old adage. But if you if you think, hey, should we be doing something? Most likely the answer is yes. Well, this is the time of year where we all get excited because things are trying to wake up. But it's like you have this little thought in your mind, this ever looming, uh, oh, man, is there going to be a late freeze? Is mm-hmm. there going to be uh, you know, some bad weather coming? Uh, it's so it's it's a kind of a strange time you're excited but you're also very cautious about what could potentially come and right. and you know i know right now we're we're kind of ahead of schedule here yeah, in north carolina we're most of the east is, coast this year yeah. is at least three weeks ahead of yeah. our regular schedule so we're a little bit more like a late april or mid-april freeze right yeah. now than yeah. a than a uh a may or a march freeze so we're a little it's a little weirder than normal because we are a little bit more active than normal for this time of the year. Now, if your trees are dormant or they're completely out of leaf, you really don't need to be doing too much. You still want to protect your containers because they're activating. So the sap may be high in those, you know, if you have containerized plants that are easy to move, I recommend bringing them into an unheated garage, cold frame or basement uh, or a shed somewhere you can protect them from extreme dips. You always want to protect Japanese maples and containers from extreme changes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's, and it's something that uh, kind of r- puts more responsibility when you're growing in containers like that, because mm-hmm. you have to keep those things in mind. Uh, whereas when things are in the ground, it's not as, as intently, you know, part of your routine. Whereas mm-hmm. when you have containers, you have to constantly be checking on those. And, you know, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's part of, I think what we all go through in learning experiences, and that's that's what's awesome about our channel is we get to share those experiences and uh, other people's experiences too. You guys feel free to ask questions in, right. the, in the live chat. Uh, we'd be glad to try to answer some of those questions for you. Um, you know, it's it's uh, we're all in this together, so we're all kind of just you know, sharing information and experience. Yeah, uh, one thing I'd like to bring up before we get too far into the chat too is you know our good friend Tom Cox passed away last weekend. Yeah. A good friend of ours. A uh, godly man in heaven right now. Sure. I think a lot of him. And I uh, just wanted to say we're praying for Evelyn and Tom's kids. Uh, you know, just peace for them. And uh, Tom was such an awesome guy. We, we think very fondly of, of Mr. Cox. He was uh, such a big encourager here at our nursery. I know Brian got to spend a little time with him last fall. It means a lot to us to actually get out there. Uh, you know, I, I'm really glad, uh, you know, just for my own um, nostalgia purposes to get to go back and watch some of that material and listen to the podcast with him. And I'm, I'm glad we got him on audio so that I have it for me really yeah, <laughs> selfishly. Right. Like I'll enjoy going back and, and listening to him there. I, I listened to that podcast this weekend. It was pretty cool. So, I um, mean, yeah, that was a really cool experience for me to get to meet him. Um, and we clicked right away. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he kept joking around with me. He said, I can tell you're from Oklahoma, right. with that big oaky grin that you got on your face. So, He's one of those guys that you uh, never don't feel welcome in a room with Tom. Yeah. He's just one of those guys that's so – and he definitely took a liking to you right away. It was uh, – <laughs> uh, he, he he likes to throw the jab. He was always mentally very sharp, even though his body had, had declined over the years. He was still just as sharp as ever when we did that podcast with him. And, uh, 
he's just a funny guy. I like to throw the jab a little bit. He likes yeah. to pick on you. He likes to, <laughs> to ask a lot of questions and keep it engaging. And, uh, Hey, I'll miss, I'll miss our talks for sure. But, uh, yeah, you know, I highly recommend it. You know, if you didn't get a chance to see those or even just to go back and watch back through, we got some amazing material when we went there. Um, one of the things that we really enjoyed about that is we got to include Tom and in everything right. that we were doing. And so. that was kind of the point to it. Yeah, yeah, we wanted to make sure that he was part of it. We knew Tom was of the essence with Tom yeah. even back then. Yeah. I mean, I've been friends with Tom, you know, since probably 2009 or 2010. So he was at my wedding. It's a guy I've known a long time. But part of the reason we went wasn't for the plants. It was for Tom. You know, yeah. we wanted to get him sure. on camera. We wanted to get him explaining. And, uh, you know, things things weren't great then for him health-wise. But, uh, man, he, he – uh, he had no shortage of enthusiasm going around that garden. No, we had man, to, he, he we had to push his wheelchair out of a few areas. He got stuck <laughs> yeah. in. We had to push him back up a mountain. But he was so excited to get down there and show us stuff. And just, man, we had a ball with him. So it's yeah. it'll always hold a special place. And I just wanted to say, uh, you know, we're thinking about Evelyn especially today. Yep. And, uh, you know, thoughts and prayers with the Cox family. They're wonderful people. And uh, we're going to miss our buddy Tom. He's definitely in a better place. I, I know for a fact where that man's at, he's a – a good godly man, and I, I just think the world of him. Absolutely. Anyway, Absolutely. Uh, want to get on to the cold snap, guys. Uh, we need to be preparing for this weather. Uh, one of my ranges I like to talk about is time below 24, 25. So yeah. if you're looking at your your upcoming schedule, now, you know, the Weather Channel apps and all those things, uh, they have so many different factors that, that may not really tell us the truth there. So – I try to prepare for at least the possibility of four to five degrees colder than anything they're saying. So if I'm seeing 30, you know, I might go ahead and prepare for 25. Yeah. Right. Just in case. Cause yeah. I've certainly been burned with uh, our, our pipes and everything freezing up here when, you know, it said 35, but it got 28. So yeah. a five but degree swing there is generally what I go for. But yeah, there's a lot of variability. I mean, it seems like every day we've checked it and it's right. been something different every day. It gets so. worse every time too. <laughs> I'm like, geez, I'm gonna quit looking. It's uh it's one of those things, you know, I, I was thinking about this today. Uh, one of the first things that pops into my mind about this situation is the old uh, hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy. Don't panic. Right. Yeah. Right? You know, the big don't panic. Uh, you know, we're all going to, feel that panic inside about, oh man, what are we going to do? But it's all about preparation. And then, you know, just a matter of taking the time to do what you can to prepare for it. I mean, there's a lot of things you can, you can do. And I mean, it's going to depend on how much you're willing to put effort into it. Right. I mean, cause it's, yeah. you know, a lot of us have maybe a smaller collection. It's easy to bring them inside. They're all in containers. You put them in a garage, you're good to go. There's mm -hmm. a lot of us like me, for example, uh, I've got probably 150 Japanese maples in the ground and I would say probably 20 to 25 of them are trying to leaf out right now. Right. And so, you know, it's going to take some time and some effort to get out there and try to prepare for what's coming. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're fully protected here at our nursery. We're not worried about any of our products. Our products are all inside cold frames and we have heaters already set up. So there's no... There's no threat to our actual product here. Uh, we do have concern for our customers and for, you know, in the ground product, our yeah. display gardens and things like that. We're going to try to protect there. Uh, all of our product here at our nursery, just to be clear, is, uh, you know, it's it's got state-of-the-art protection going on there with the cold frames. They're going to stay above freezing, and uh, there won't be any issues there at all. But you do need to take some precaution for things outside that are in leaf. Now, there's a big difference in a frost and a cold snap. Now, some of you will be experiencing a frost, and some of you will be experiencing a cold snap. Now, I consider a cold snap that time uh, below freezing and how long it's going to be. And when I start getting concerned is when I start seeing lower 20s, 25 and below yeah. for an extended amount of time. Now, I will say one of the beauties of what we're getting here, there's going to be some 25 uh, in our area, but it's not for an extended amount of time. It's not mm -hmm. super long, so it's not a super hard freeze. And it does take those ground temperatures and everything a little bit of time to get down that low you're actually warmer at the ground where a lot of the smaller plants are, so that's all good, positive things. Yeah. Uh, we've been very warm, so our ground temperatures are high, yeah. which is going to sustain us from getting into as hard of a freeze. But I do see uh, continual cold spells. So preparing for this can be similar for the frost and for the freeze. Again, if you have any small plants that are in containers, no-brainer. Easy, easy. You know, if you got it in a container, it's a no-brainer. That's right. Bring it inside. It's easy. <laughs> Uh, guys, go ahead and move those. You know, if you have to bring them into your regular home, do it. 
but I encourage a garage or an unheated basement. Uh, you know, we were just talking to Corbin. He's going to bring his stuff into a, you know, an unheated basement because that way it's not getting super active. Yeah. And that's a perfect way to be preparing for most people. Um, if it's in a pot, though, yeah, go ahead and take the effort. Move it. It's not fun. Nobody likes doing it, but it's part of the care that it, it, sometimes it requires to be a plant collector. Yeah, and another thing with containers also that I'd like to just kind of remind people is, is a lot of them, uh, a lot of us have those set up like on our deck or up on the porch or something like that where they're not having that ground contact, which could help you know, with, uh, those temperatures. So mm-hmm. they're more susceptible to right. freeze damage and, and, and cold point. temperatures when they're sitting up elevated like that on a porch, like on a concrete slab or a deck, a wooden deck or something like that, where you've got that cold air underneath. Um, so definitely, even though it may look like it's in a sheltered spot up on the porch, mm-hmm. it is elevated off the ground. You're not getting that warmth from the ground and it's more susceptible to that damage. <clears throat> Yeah, guys, just be conscious. Uh, you know, one of the main things you want to do here when you're preparing for the cold is not do things that are going to be counterproductive. It's easy to take steps. I've personally done it. My brother's done it. Uh, I know everybody. <laughs> it's easy to do, guys. You don't want to be adding things to your plants that are going to uh, heat them up too much. So uh, a great example of that is a clear plastic bag or even a black plastic bag. You're going to hold moisture too close to the plant. You're going to cause more tissue damage because of that moisture being tight on the plant. You're also going to cause the plant to sweat. And we don't want our plants sweating. We don't want them transpiring. I mean, plants don't sweat. But you don't want them having a lot of transpiration during this time of freeze. So Mm. a plastic bag can create a false little dome there, and it can heat your plant up too much during the day, and it's not really providing much insulation at night. So uh, think about cloth coverings. We all don't have frost cloth. Uh, everybody doesn't have frost cloth. A lot of people have bed sheets, and so a lot of people have T-shirts. I mean, I was I was joking the other day. Pillowcases. Yeah, yeah me, I mean, me and Brian, I got a hoodie on right now. For the cost of doing laundry, I can cover my Japanese princess with a pretty good thick hoodie. Right. Uh, that seems like a good deal to me. I got, I'm got i a 2XL. I can cover a lot of plants with some shirts. <laughs> uh, you know, it pays to be a 2XL right now because I got a lot of fabric, so I can cover a lot of plants. But think about putting a shirt around uh, some of your smaller plants. Think about putting you know, something slightly insulated over some of your smaller plants that are in leaf. Now, um, there, there's a whole different factor going on there for frost, but a similar preparation. You want to be covering those. Uh, frost is, can occur anytime we're below 35. You can get frost-like conditions where the air gets light in the morning. Uh, I always like to let people know, I don't encourage watering systems for the frost. So if you're the people that are going to be in the frost-only type conditions, uh, you know, frost can be damaging to foliage. Typically doesn't kill maples. We, we get frost yeah. here every year, yeah. to be honest with you. Western North Carolina, uh, I, I don't know a season. I've been doing this since 08, and I don't know a year that I haven't had any frost. It's, it's always a thing here. Most of the time, I water my trees two to three weeks out. You don't notice the frost at all. Uh, heck, even, uh, you know, by a lot of our garden tours we've had here before in early spring, people don't notice any frost damage on the display gardens. Right. Uh, Grayson Schisler asks, how long does it take to protect your display gardens, Matt? So it can vary. Uh, A couple years ago, we had two back-to-back hard freezes, one in late April, and those were a lot more concerning because we had more in leaf. Uh, Right now in uh, the Maplewood Gardens, there are only about three to four trees that are fully enough along that I'm really going to have to do a lot. The uh, the, – Jade Dragon is pretty much fully in leaf. That's a dwarf in my parents' garden. But that tree's been there, gosh, since the 90s. So it's it, it has been through this before. Yeah. It's a little concerning, but we don't want to freak out. I'm going to put some bed sheets over it. I actually have a whole video where we cover that tree before yeah. during a cold snap. Uh, there is a Kiyohimi I'm going to have to cover. I think a, a Japanese princess that's in leaf in their garden. And uh, there's a, a 25, 26-foot Wayne Oyama that you know, I'm not covering and uh, it has to fend for itself. So it is what it is when it gets to a certain size. But your smaller plants that you can protect, I recommend taking some steps to go ahead and get out in front of that. Um, you know, big containers, you can insulate them if it's not a movable container. Uh, but think about providing a little bit of insulation around the plants. Uh, I do tend to secure that with a rope or some twist ties. Uh, you know, one thing I want to be conscious of is not leaving that on too long. Yeah. And you definitely want that cloth-like material, breathable uh, material. That's why we always say plastic bags is not a good thing for covering up your Japanese maples. I mean, it's just 
Uh, you want a breathable material like a cloth, something that right. can get some airflow in there. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, Maple Maniac, he says, uh, when in doubt, get the bed sheets out. Right? That's, I mean, right. Yes. We, got the, we got the Johnny Cochran going on today. <laughs> if it's in a container, it's a no-brainer. That's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Michael uh, Hosley asks, should Zone 7 be as, be as concerned as 6 be? Now, the honest answer for that is, Yes, and sometimes more so. It just depends on your conditions. So if you're further along and you're going to have an extended amount of time below 25, then yes. If you're if you're still dormant, I mean, there's so many variables here. So I wish I could just say, guys, in this region, protect. I mean, I know Grayson Shizzler, he's in Maryland. He said he has nothing in Leaf right now, which is the best case scenario, right? right yeah. Uh, I know people in Dallas who got greatly affected by the 07 freeze more than us mm-hmm. because it stayed – you know, they were further along, right. and then they went into colder temps. So it necessarily doesn't matter if you're in a warmer zone. What matters is how far along you are in leaf, and then your time below, like, 25. That's where I really get concerned. Now, uh, the first day of our, our freeze right now, we're looking at only staying below, you know, 25, 26 for a couple hours. So I'm going to protect not as critical as an extended amount of time. I take more precautions if I can if it's going to be an extended amount of time below 25. Now, one of the best tricks you can do is as soon as we are back up to those warmer conditions, so as soon as you're back into, say, like 35 degrees and you're not seeing a freeze again in the forecast. So you don't want to do it. Like, I know this Saturday it may also be pretty cold. So uh, Saturday and Sunday are looking fairly cold here in western North Carolina as well. Next Monday, we're going to water the entire nursery. So Monday, Tuesday, we're looking at, like, 40s in temperatures Mm -hmm. here. Uh, we're going to be watering in ground. We're going to give everything a good drink. And it's going to help those trees that might have had any tissue damage during that that cold spell, those cell walls that might be a little more damaged for plants. It gives them a good time to recuperate. So water everything in well, and we'll pray that we don't have a back-to-back freeze again like we did in 2020. That was a brutal time. Right. Uh, 07 was the worst I can ever remember. 07, uh, I was actually just taking the business over for my dad in 07, and uh, we had a, a generational freeze uh, second or third week in March. We were down to like five degrees for over 32 hours. Mm. And uh, it, it wiped out, you know, the apple industry. Right. The, the pine trees were dying. And, and that was all along the East Coast. So it wasn't just here. I mean, my, my friends in Dallas had more damages than we did here just because of the extreme conditions all along the East Coast. So be prepared for things like that. Um, I, I tell people, go ahead and get your, your pillowcases, your bed sheets, your t-shirts, your items ready. Uh, best case scenario is you don't need them. You know, you're looking at that temperature, it goes up a little bit. You're not having too long of a time below 25. Right. And you know, frost matters. Don't be wrong. Frost matters. Frost could kill a tree potentially, but I rarely, if ever see a tree die from frost. Usually they'll recover from that. It makes a tree look less desirable for a few weeks. Normally, uh, it's that hard freeze that you got to be prepared for. So I'm looking at uh, Bruce Burton's here in the chat. He's, he's got a great question. That's something I wanted to actually visit with you about a little bit is about, you know, when we talk about leafing out or swollen buds or maybe they just open, right. like what, at, at what stages should you be most concerned of, you know, when you're thinking about the, how far along these plants right. are, <clears throat> they're way more durable than we ever think, you know, yeah. still it's better to be prepared than not. I don't worry too much about protecting trees that just have swollen buds. I never have, to be honest with you. Uh, I always have a few things that are further along, like that jade dragon in the garden is way further along. And so my attention goes to the things that are more in leaf. Mm -hmm. And most things that have swollen buds get ignored. Now, that could cause some damage, but it's not as as likely. Right. Uh, Dad always jokes that, you know, that early new spring foliage has some antifreeze in it. It's what he always said in his, (laughs) his country accent is those got antifreeze in them. Uh, and, and it, there is some truth to that. There is a lot of natural protection for buds right. when they're just starting to leaf out. Um, in an ideal situation, we have a really lo- slow, steady spring where we leaf out over several weeks, right. but uh, you know, it's not ideal and it. it's, it's some, or it is ideal, but it's not something that happens that frequently in the South, especially. So we have to prepare for these little freezes. Um, so it's kind of like prioritizing. You basically look at what, what you have in your collection, whatever you might have planted out in the landscape, and say, okay, these are right. the ones that are furthest along. This is where I should start with my prevention. 
and then just kind of work your way down to, yeah. you know, what you feel like, okay, this one doesn't seem like it's, right. you know, it's still got a nice protection on that bud. You know, like, Personally, I've never covered, um, it mo- I say never, but if it was an extreme, extreme late freeze, once everything's in leaf, that's different. Most of the time when we're getting these early freezes like this, which happens every year, I mean, it, as yeah. much as we get concerned <laughs> about it, I mean, it's also just called spring. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, <laughs> exactly. it happens every single year there are differing degrees of damaging. So, you know, you have to look at that temperature below 25 and how long it's going to be down there into those hard freezes. Uh, I've never covered Japanese maples that just had swollen buds yeah. or even like the japonicums where they've spit out the flower. Right. They hadn't thrown any foliage out. The, the flowers peeking out of the bud. I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to cover any of those. I'm going to, I'm going to let them fend for themselves. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be covering enough trees that have uh, full foliage right now. Right. There's, you know, five or six in Dad's garden. And maybe three or four in my garden that I'm going to be, you know, making sure to put most of my attention on. Uh, be careful, guys! Don't put a bucket that's going to be hot. Um, you know, once upon a time we put a giant bucket over a Makawa type, and somebody we won't say who might have been a little brother. Uh, <laughs> he's not here to defend himself, so we'll just blame Tim actually then. But it, he somebody put a heat lamp up under a giant like thirty gallon bucket that we put over a Makawa type. Well, we had a late snow. The tree was starting to leaf out. We had, you know, really wasn't that bad. Actually, a little bit of snow really doesn't normally kill trees, even in leaf. Like they're 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 tough, man. You'd be surprised. Like they they're tough plants. They're very resilient. Uh, but that that transpiration of it getting too hot in there and pushing the tree too far along was more damaging. So you don't want to be providing false heat. You don't want to be putting uh, heaters on things unnecessarily. Um, so you want to be careful there that what you're doing isn't causing more issues for the plant. So we've got a question here from uh, Golden Pole, I think would be a good one to cover. He's, he's saying, can you use Super Thrive when you water? Now, the first thing that comes to my mind is, right. is uh, we don't want to be activating these plants too early. I mean, we're already here thinking you know, mm-hmm. these, they're too far along for this freeze coming in. So you don't want to enhance that by using the fertilizer too quickly. Now, later on, once we know we've passed that right. that late frost or late freeze, uh, definitely something that you could use, uh, liquid fertilizers, things like that, to try to get those plants to bounce back. But we don't want to be doing that too soon because then you run the risk of getting that plant way too active too early in the season right. when inevitably there's probably another freeze or another – Frost coming later. So. Yeah, you got to watch out for that. Uh, you know, in 2020, we had two back-to-back freezes in April, which is rare, but it, it did happen. And the things that were fully back in leaf by the second freeze took more damage. Yeah. And sure. the things that weren't fully in leaf by the second freeze were better. Uh, you know, water them in, let them relief, be conscious of the upcoming weather. So before you use any liquid fertilizers, uh, you know, actually miracle Grow doesn't have a lot of nitrogen in it, so it's okay for the most part. And I do think it helps recovery. Um, be careful with high nitrogen liquid fertilizers, like Brian's saying, because you don't want to force too much too early. Because yeah. I mean, we're still early. Yeah, I mean, it's, we're still we're still really early this season, and you don't want to be you know blasting onto the scene. Yeah, <laughs> and, and then we've got another issue in two weeks. For sure, man. So um, a pillowcase. Uh, you know, Ted here is asking. We're he's in Hendersonville, so howdy neighbor. We're just here in East Flat Rock. Uh, a pillowcase works, you know, make sure, uh, sometimes I'll use something a little thicker if it's not going to be a frost. Like I might even use like some sweaters or some hoodies to cover a couple plants, depending on, um, you know, how, how cold we're getting. So, uh, pillowcases work. If you got something a little thicker, wouldn't hurt t-shirts, uh, you know, flannel jacket, something like that. It's going to work great. If you can wash it later, something, something like an old shirt or, uh, you know, my wife was recently, uh, painting our child's room. Uh, our little guy's room, she painted blue. We moved our, our kid from his nursery into his own room. Still got the <laughs> crib in there, but he's getting his own room a little further away from my room so I can sleep at night. <laughs> and uh, we've been painting his room, so she's got some painter's cloth. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a, a little bit less permeable, but we're going to use some of that around some of our, our trees that are low and spreading because it's just big, and that'll help us cover it over a little bit. Now, just be conscious. Any of that stuff that's going to hold heat too much, you got to get it off pretty quick. Once, uh, once the temperatures get back up, because materials will surprise you that aren't cloth. They yeah. can, yeah, yeah, they can magnify the heat. Yeah, and let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about how uh, thinking about how long do you keep 
a cloth or, or a sheet on the plant. And mm -hmm. we were kind of discussing that this morning. You know, we've got consecutive days here right. in a row where we're going to have uh, below freezing temperatures. Um, and then we kind of get back up above that for a couple of days. Right. And then we go right back to it again leading into the weekend. I would so. say a great deal about how long depends on your highs. Yeah. So if you're getting up into like, you know, if, it, if you see you're going to be 26 again next week, uh, you can sometimes leave it on. Now, now uh, again, you don't want to leave it on too long. And if you're going to be 75 or 60 in between, then you're going to need to remove it and put it back. Yeah. That's just the bottom line. So it really depends on the weather. There's no one size fits all yeah. there either. But you need to be conscious of the upcoming weather, especially in between those cold snaps. Like one day in the 60s with anything that's reflective in heat is going to cause more damage than the cold. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to be very careful there. It's so easy to overstress the the young foliage with uh, plastic or something that's going to make them too hot. So, and I think it really comes down to to as of how much effort you're wanting to put into to what you're doing. You know, as, how often do you want to go out, take that off, put it back on? I know everybody wants a one time answer, know, especially right? the <laughs> Chicago guys. Like, there's so many cool you know plant people in Chicago, and I know their weather's just crummy there. Um, and, 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 and people want to go, well, I'm going to take my burlap out in December. I'm going to duct tape it around the base and I'm right. going to come back in April. And like, that just doesn't work guys. So with any of these things, you have to be conscious of once the inclement weather's over the extreme changes, reversing what you did. So you want to take any of the protective materials off as soon as possible and then be able to water. So yeah. I would say anytime you're above freezing as a rule of thumb, that's a good time to get the material back off when you're above like, you know, freezing 33, but say when you're above that threat of frost in the 35, 36 range, right, right. let's go ahead and get those materials back off as a general rule of thumb. You know, if you know the very next night you're going back down cold, you can leave things, but it's, it's all about that temperature in between. Right. I'm sure my neighbors are probably going to be wondering what I'm going to be yeah, doing. Ghost like, town. Like, near you. Yeah. <laughs> and like. I, I was telling Matt, I was like, I got a ton of these Mr. Maple shirts. Right. So there's going to be like a bunch of Mr. Maple uh, right. ghosts out gonna, in the garden. They're be like, is it Halloween? What are people decorating <laughs> for over there? This guy's crazy. Put some sunglasses on them and some hats. <laughs> So really just be conscious there. Uh, you know, I have used Nature Shield. Nature Shield's a great product. We actually use it a lot here at our nursery. It was invented uh, in the strawberry field so they could basically preserve things. But it is an anti-decusant. One of the reasons we use it when we ship is we spray our, our soft, tender foliage down with Nature Shield. Mm -hmm. um, and it helps them not transpire as much during shipping. It's something we do here with every single tree when we're in leaf. And it helps with that time in box a lot. Now, uh, Nature Shield can be hard to find. Yeah. It is it is the best product I've seen. There's a few places online that you can find it and order it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, if you can get your hands on it, I highly recommend it because I, I used it quite a bit in my garden in Oklahoma. Yeah. Uh, especially during those late freeze situations and even that extreme heat in the summer. I've even used uh, it to glue some buds up so things don't leaf out too quickly. Sure. So I if mean, things it, are leafing out too quickly, I'll kind of hit some some dormant buds that are just starting. And uh, just, just seal them, them up a little yeah, bit. Slows yeah. them down a little bit, yeah. It, it's all about, there's so many different tricks. Uh, you know, I know places, I've heard of places using different fertilizers or or even, um, gosh, you know, some nurseries will go out and spray out their um, systemics and weed killers and they'll create a, like an air drift that keeps it warmer. You got to be so careful with that. There's always yeah. a trade-off and I don't recommend it for the home gardener. Uh, leave that to some guy who's studied that for forever. I, I don't trust myself to get that right. Right. Um, especially the sprinkler systems. People will turn on their sprinkler systems, and nine times out of ten, we're adding extra moisture to the situation that's going to cause a harder freeze, more leaf damage, more issues. Uh, you know, it might work in the deep south for big, big operations that have, you know, a, a ton of outside plants that aren't as – tender as maples and some of the plants were growing. So, uh, I, I, I don't advise your average gardener to try the, you know, yeah, I, I don't spray even do this that. down and let it freeze. And you know, there's I've a lot of different it. techniques that, man, it's, it's impossible to get right. Yeah, like it, it don't, don't do it. You're better off with the cover. Yeah. The moisture is just adding another deadly component. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Don't do it. Uh, 
Yeah, unheated garages work great. Uh, Michael Nelson asked. He's in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, shout out to another neighbor. We're just like 40 minutes away from me here. And uh, unheated garage is the perfect situation. You know, water them in well if you're going to be gone two weeks before you leave. Don't put them in the saucer of death, but water them in well. Let them dry out completely. And they should be ready for a good watering when you get back this time of the year. You shouldn't have any issues uh, with that long of a time frame. Um, an unheated garage is typically ideal. Greenhouses work. Just be careful. Again, uh, little unheated greenhouses can be your friend, uh, but they can also be your worst nightmare if uh, you're relying solely on solar temperatures with plastic. Yeah. Uh, your, your small poly will, uh, you know, especially clear poly, will leaf your trees out really quickly. And it's going to hold some nighttime temp- temperatures higher. So you're going to retain a little bit more heat in a cold frame at night, but not really a lot. So if we're getting into 25, you're likely going to still be in below freezing for an extended amount of time in a poly house. So just be careful that, you know, you're not activating them more than they need be and pushing them too hard from the heat. So always be careful with any added heat. That's really the main factor. Um, yeah, we really appreciate you guys jumping in here and asking questions, man. Uh, you know, we, we've been trying to do these lives and yeah. just to, just to kind of interact with you guys a little bit more on our channel. We we always uh, appreciate everyone jumping in and uh, being a part of this. With I mean, this is the whole reason why we do this is because of of you guys. We want to share our our knowledge and experience and just uh, kind of create a community where we can all get together and talk about plants and what we can do to protect them and right. grow them right. And, Uh, This is a really cool way to do this. Dave Blank said, uh, plants have endured and survived long before man and uh, started pampering them. Don't fuss over them. Just my thoughts. And to an extent, I definitely agree. For sure. Uh, You know, it's uh, it's called spring. Like, that's what we have every year. We do this every year. Uh, With younger plants, you know, we're talking about juvenile plants. You do want to protect. It is better to have that ounce prevention for smaller plants with tender young foliage for extreme changes. You know, I've got, like I said, I've got a triflorum in my parents' garden, too, that's pretty much always in leaf. Tough as nails, by the way. I think yeah. more should be done with that. Uh, I know some different maples that we're going to be doing some breeding with, especially with some of the stuff we learned from Sue Egriff. There's a couple different species within section palmata that are extreme frost resistant. Yeah. So I think there's some really fun possibilities there for you know, we always like to call it giving maple superpowers. Yeah. <laughs> but I think there's some fun possibilities there for down the road. Uh, you know, so you don't want to get bent out of shape. It, yeah, it I is, mean, it is being spring. conservative, I yeah. think, is always the best approach to it. Sometimes we talk about that a lot. Sometimes if you, you try to be overprotective, overcautious, right. over, you know, uh, you can damage your plants more than if you had just. Oh, exactly. You know what I mean? So I think, I think definitely uh, there is a point to that where it's, the plants are very adaptable to their surroundings, but we can also play a part in that in protecting young plants. Especially like you with said. young juvenile plants. Right. I mean, you know, older plants, uh, they're going to have to fend for themselves. I have a 25-foot Wayne Oyama. It might be even be bigger than that now. Right. I brought that up from Richard Bomar's garden. I don't think you're covering that with a T-shirt. It's not. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any T-shirt. Shaq T-shirt won't fit that bad boy. It's, it's a big one. Uh, I, I don't think there's anything big enough to get over that one feasibly. Right. And it's been through multiple bad situations before. Now, what I am going to do is as soon as the freeze is over, I'm going to give that an ample amount of water. For sure. And I'm going to give that that tree a, a good drink so that all that, that foliage has a chance to try to perk back up. There's going to be some burn on uh, Oeno Yama completely in leaf at 25. There, there will be some burnt foliage. Uh, but but it's not something they can't recover from either. A lot of that, too, uh, is will be more of a cosmetic mm-hmm. issue for the plant. I right. mean, it... One thing's about maples is, is they will push out a new flush as they get further along into the season. And so that original damaged leaves will right. eventually be overtaken by the new flush of growth as you head into further into the season. So, I mean, yeah, it's not going to be as beautiful as it normally would be that season, but it's not going to be uh, as far as like kill the plant. I don't think it's going to be, you know what I mean? It's just not going to have, temperature. A, a, you know, have you, a layer of damage that happened to the foliage. But other than that, I think everything's going to be fine. I've had 18 in leaf before. Yeah. So, I mean, that was pretty bad. I had 18 in April uh, in 2020. Um, it, there were a lot of damaged foliage. We certainly weren't doing a lot of walkthroughs <laughs> that, that spring of, of the Mr. Maplewood Knoll Gardens there. Uh, there was some damages. There was some beautiful trees. There was some trees that I did lose because they 
went through multiple back-to-back hard freezes. And that's really what you got to be careful of. And that's why we say, you know, watch out for your fertilizers going too far. Yeah. Because that second one's what gets you. And that's definitely part of just being into gardening. You know, right. I, we, I, I know from experience, I've lost a few maples over the years. And it's always kind of a heartbreaking experience whenever that happens. It teaches some patience. But it does. And, <laughs> some and acceptance. It, and you learn a lot from it. You know, maybe you tried a few different techniques and it didn't do fair well mm-hmm. the way you covered it or whatever you might have done. And so you kind of learn as you go from those experiences. Um, but, it, you know, it's, it's a great way here to discuss right just what we've experienced what other people has experienced it, it's a it's a cool way I, I see here michael nelson says thanks for the advice and he'll see us at the open house awesome awesome yeah hey and this stuff goes for any of the plants we do uh you know not just japanese maples this is true uh most of your conifers i wouldn't recommend covering because they don't have tender new growth but this goes for azaleas this goes for so many of the different plants if you have hydrangeas leafing out they're tough really generally uh, dailies can go through just everything. Like there's different levels of tender new growth foliage. So be conscious of what stage your plants are at. You don't want to be pushing them further along in case there's later freezes. You want to be doing things that will insulate them, but not overheat them. That's really the main thing. So just be careful, make good decisions and don't freak out. Yeah. <laughs> it happens don't every panic. year. <laughs> don't, don't get into an all out panic. So, yeah, and one of the things I, I'll, I'll say again, too, uh, those of us who are doing uh, container gardening and those things, uh, make sure that you don't forget about those plants in your garage. You know, yeah. it's really easy to, to move everything in there and say, I'm just going to leave everything in there until end of April, and n- that's not a good idea. You're going to have some you know, fungus. It, right. It you got to take the time to bring them in when it's necessary, but mm. also bring them back out so that they continue to acclimate to the changing of the seasons. Uh, you don't want to just bring everything into a dark basement and leave it there for a month and expect those plants to do well oh, at all. Man. Uh, the, it, I, I've seen it happen before. I've seen some I, horror stories you know, where people, people showed me plants that were, uh, you know, completely lack of chlorophyll, <laughs> just yeah. all white ghost. Right. <laughs> I mean, look really cool, honestly. Yeah. I wish we could replicate it. But, you know, like, I don't know what's wrong with my tree. I left it in my basement all year. And right. it's like, <laughs> man, that thing's, that thing's on, like, death's door. You're going to have to gradually provide sunlight to get just enough photosynthesis into this plant to get some color back into this plant. And it's going to drop all this foliage and hopefully reform some buds. So be careful with, with leaving it, like Brian said. It's a great point. You know, any of the things you do to prepare for this cold snap, you need to also undo pretty quickly. Uh, Grayson's got a great question here for the for the less cold tolerant mm-hmm. uh, varieties. Are you have any tips for for those like a coral bark variety or something? Keep them dry before the freeze. You know you don't want to be over water and going into the freeze. Sometimes you can't help it. Like we had some rain here this week, right? And uh, we're in zone six B. I've never lost a coral bark in the ground here, uh, but I, I do rate them zone six through zone nine. Now we don't really rate a lot of our coral bark zone five, mm-hmm. just because of. They, they can be a little more tender. They have a, a thinner cambium for sure on the coral barks. Uh, that goes for Bihu or any of the any of the bark interest right. style trees that are, you know, colored. Those can definitely be a little more tender. Their bark is just thinner overall. That cambium layer isn't as thick. Uh, you have to graft them very quickly for that reason, too. When you graft them, you can't leave the sinewood laying around. They kind of they kind of uh, rot like a banana t- quicker than the regular sinewood. Right, so if you're right. going to graft a Bihu, you have to cut it and graft it right away. Now, don't leave them too wet. I mean, they, they don't like it wet anyway, but I wouldn't intentionally water going into the freeze. You're going to put more sap into the tree for potential bark break. Uh, you know, you don't want your trees soaking wet going into a heavy freeze. You don't want them freeze drying either. Ideally, you've watered your trees. You've let them dry out just a little bit. Mm-hmm. They have an ample amount of water in the soil, so they're not freeze drying. And they're going to go through a cold temperature without, you know, a hard, heavy freeze on the roots. Uh, we watered last week knowing that things were getting kind of cold. And then we've kind of let everything kind of gradually dry out this week intentionally. And then after that freeze, water again. So water your coral barks, especially after the the freeze is over. Go ahead and make sure you give those a good drink. Uh, But but don't overdo it. That's that's the number one thing. If you're in a zone that's pushing it for the plants, you know, you definitely got to protect. So if you're you're growing coral barks in zone 5 or if you're growing a, you know, a zone 7 plant, we're really here in zone 6B, those plants you're going to need to protect. I mean, I always push zones with plants. I've grown Mundino gum trees here that are like zone 10. Right. You know, I mean, I've done it. 
<laughs> and I got too brave. Right. <laughs> like a 10-foot one. God, I'm not even going to heat it this year. I'm just going to leave it the unheated greenhouse. And then, it was a zone 10 plant. Yeah. I, I had this idea to get the Mondino gum trees, which are those, um, you see them in Hawaii, like the uh, the painted bark, the rainbow eucalyptus. Right. And I wanted to make a bonsai of that. Somebody still needs to do it. I had a, I had a, a good maybe inch and a half, two inch caliper one. I was trunk cutting it. And I, I was like, you know, I'm not even going to heat that this year. Well, negative nine wiped that right out. <laughs> that is not, it's a zone 10 plant. It doesn't even go into zone nine naturally. Uh, so I got a little too brave. I was like, I've acclimated that. It's just going to do it itself this year. So no, protect any of your zone pushers for sur- for sure this time. Um, but really anything that's super active, anything that's super active, those are the plants that are going to need the most attention because they're the ones that are the furthest into spring and they're the ones that are the most likely to get any damage because of that. Guys, I hope you like these chats. We love to hop in here. I noticed Brian mentioned the uh, the open house coming up. Uh, you oh, know, man. One on a positive note here. Right. We've scared you to death. Hopefully, we'll give you some good <laughs> advice for what to do. Hopefully, we haven't just traumatized everybody. But if you weren't doing anything, hopefully, we've woke you up a little bit as well so that you'll know. I'll tell you one of my favorite ones, and I'm not picking on anybody here, but I had a, I have a really good customer, really smart guy too, but he said, uh, hey, I've got a lot of trees on the on my deck. You think if I leave the light on, it'll help them any? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it probably takes it up at least 20 degrees. At right? least, I mean, you're all good. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, there's some things that, that don't make too much difference. I mean, maybe, maybe a, a really warm light in a well house makes a difference, but uh, on a porch, I don't know. Yeah, that's I don't think so. But, yeah, open house. I mean, I know everybody's getting excited. I've been seeing people comment about the open house. Um, I mean, you guys, honestly, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of the collector that came out here to work right. for Brian Matt loves open house. I love open house for, I mean, I, all those years I bought from you guys, I was like, man, I wish I could have came to an open house, you right. know, like, uh, so I'm telling you, get excited about it because there are thousands and thousands of maples and just a huge variety. I think we probably have more variety than we've ever had at an open house. I mean, there are just huge varieties of, of, of different uh, maples out there and and you know come and find me I'll help you find all the good stuff I mean we, we like I said there's going to be enough for everybody too I know we joke around like people are like oh it's going to sell out on Friday no, right. there's no way we're gonna sell. there <laughs> yeah, is right. thousands and thousands <laughs> and thousands of greenhouses full of plants out there it's, it's insane it's we overdo it and we, there's going to be over 510 gallons this year yeah and crazy stuff. I know if you were in the other live chat where Tim and I mentioned that a little bit, he read that full list for you guys. Uh, you know, Purple Ghosts and Moonrise are some of my favorite highlights. There's some rare dwarfs, some things rarely seen in 10 gallons we're going to be letting go of. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. guys, you want to you want to be a part of that. That is Friday, March 24th from 8 to 5, and Saturday, March 25th from 8 to 12. Now, we will have a heavy cutoff at both those times. So, uh, you know, bear with us if you're arriving really late. We will still be closing at 12 on Saturday and at five on Friday. And yeah, come out and see us. I mean, it, it's a great it's a great event. I mean, we all just kind of visit. We talk about plants. We answer any questions you guys have about certain varieties. Uh, if you're looking for particular things, we've got a crew out there. Everybody's here to help carry plants down. I know a lot Man, of people. We create some collectors here, right? I, I'm not sure that Nigel showed up a plant collector or, or uh, Corbin and both those guys. Oh, they're experts now. They'll yeah. show you where all the good stuff. at. That's right, man. Sean, Sean knows where all the goods are at. He was grabbing some things this week. <laughs> like it, like our guys, it's funny. Everybody gets so passionate about the plants. Yeah. It, it, um, it's a lot of fun, man. And, and we, and we share, we love sharing that passion with you guys. I know there's a lot of our customers out there that are just as passionate as we are. A lot of new staff too, probably a lot of new faces people haven't be. met before uh, or haven't seen. You know, the twins are back from college now. So some, pe- some people probably met them before, but uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people uh, to, to, to meet and greet here and a lot of knowledgeable people on plants too. That's one of the coolest parts. And, you know, we have a pretty good system, I think, of just our, our general shopping. I mean, if you if you have 10 plants, you don't have to walk around carrying them. You know, <laughs> right. we, we've got a staff that can take them down, put them in a holding area. We'll show you where Wesley and Brian's secret stash That's is. That's right. right. You know, I might let you pick, you know, hand pick a few out of my stash pile there. I mean, you know, it, it's going to be a fun time. We, we love uh, that camaraderie, and uh, hopefully we'll get some good weather for that. Again, it's March 24th. It's going to be the main day. And that starts at 8 a.m. There'll be a line here at 8 a.m. Uh, and it ends at 5 p.m. on that Friday. 
Uh, the bulk of the traffic is normally early, so uh, we will have a lot of people here between 8 and normally 11 or 12. That's kind of our busiest uh, time of the day, so bear with us. And uh, we'll have a huge staff here to help you guys, though, to find things to show you around. There'll be a lot of things that have never been offered before on our tenant tens <laughs> and greenhouses. There'll be uh, there'll be some hidden little secrets around the way people want to find. Yeah, a couple, um, couple open house questions here. So uh, Maple Maniac says, will merch be available? Absolutely. Yeah. So some of these killer hats that you see in here, uh, T-shirts. Uh, man, we've got a nice little selection of Mr. Maple merch that will be available at open house. ton of new shirts and hats. Yeah. We've been we've recently got a, a a new system for our Richardson 112s. We've got a hat we like. We don't like making a cheaper hat, so we've we've got a hat that we're really keen on, and we've found a way to make it very affordable. So we've yeah. got a local lady who does our stitching, mm-hmm. and then we're getting our hats in wholesale. So we're getting a ton of hats in the works. We're gonna we probably won't have them for this open house, but uh, we're getting some Mister Maple Show merch. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna actually have. Uh, more merch hitting the website tune as, as soon as well, too. I uh, had to get a few things worked out with our accountant and everything, get that kind of set up in its own little system. Uh, but that's coming. So we should be able to drop some merch on there. Uh, T-shirts and hats will be our main things. Um, and somebody asked if there are some discounts at Open House. And the honest answer there is yes, there are lots of discounts at Open House. Oftentimes things sell for significantly discounted prices. I can't tell you all the discounts because I don't even know yet. Yeah, We'll be marking some things down. Um, some things are at regular price. There's normally a lot of plants that go for 35, even if they're significantly Normal, higher. Yeah. Uh, I know somebody last year bought a Sir Happy for 45 and a two gallon yeah. and I about died. And uh, there were several, um, there were several, uh, variegated Makawa types and two gallons that were 45 accidentally. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, and, and, you know, as the collector, man, I tell you, dig deep into these houses cause there is a lot of good stuff. Um, you know, a lot of things are grouped together, but then there's a lot of other stuff that we had older sets of that, you know, we brought up from down low, uh, to, to fill up the greenhouses. So, I mean, there's always, it, you know, it's, it's like a scavenger hunt, you know, you get out there, you, you never know what you're going to find. It's, uh, it's always a fun time discovering what's in there. I mean, you think, you think you've seen everything, but if right. you really dig deep into some of these houses, you can find some really cool and unique plants. And sometimes our our, cus, our employees just make a mistake and take the stockhouse plants to the greenhouse. <laughs> so there were some happy people walking away with some things I didn't mean to sell last time. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't stop them. Uh, but yeah, there was some crazy stuff. I, I'd I'd went back through a greenhouse and went, wait, 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 where did where did that go? So there's always fun stuff. Um, yeah, we we uh, we plan for a lot of it too, guys. I joke about the ones that yeah. got there by accident, but there we plan to make it as exciting as possible and to have as many interesting things available for you as possible. There will be at minimum uh, the house uh, nineteen wasn't open last year. We had that blocked off with liners in it. It is full of ready one gallons now. One hundred and twenty eight foot house. There will be 312-foot houses. You know, we're talking about long. I had somebody say, oh, it's a really tall house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got some 200-foot trees we're putting in there. Uh, but uh, there will be, at minimum, three 112-foot-long uh, greenhouses and one 116-foot-long greenhouse that weren't open last fall. Oh, man. And so if you're here in the fall, you know how much stuff we had. Right. Add at least... I mean, most of our greenhouses are 96 foot long, so you're, you're adding a lot of square footage there in addition. I mean, it's it's probably close to at least six houses more of material than we've ever had available. Yeah, it's it's an exciting time here. We're really expanding here at the nursery. Uh, we've been building greenhouses, trying to get them all prepared for this open house specifically. And as soon as we get one done and, and ready, it's filled up with plants uh, for you guys to come and shop. So we're really excited about that. I mean... The, the shoppable area, it keeps expanding. That's what I really like. You know, we have our down low area where we do all of our propagation and growing off our freshly potted up stuff. But everything up top is ready to sell, and you guys get to come and shop it. I think it's a really unique opportunity. I'm building a new prop area, so it depends on – no promises. But if everything goes as planned, we may have some of the bottom part of the nursery for Memorial Day. We will be doing our Memorial Day open house. Mm-hmm. That's the only other one I can commit on for now. Right. Uh, I know we'll be doing the Memorial Day open house, um, 
And uh, that's always right on my wife's birthday, so I always have a busy weekend. I've got two birthdays. I have uh, Hicks, my son, is turning one the weekend of our open house for March, yep. and my daughter is turning four. Tinsley's turning four. So I've got two birthdays that weekend. So we might just break out some inflatables and jump right on those Sunday <laughs> after after here. I don't know. We're gonna be we're gonna be pulling our hair out after uh, doing all that and setting up for two birthday parties. But we're excited to have you guys here in person again. Uh, we should have a lot of things in leaf by the end of March. I mean, normally at the end of March we're hitting in leaf anyway. And uh, with the warmer weather we've had, I would expect that a lot of our greenhouses are going to be fully in leaf and really special, really fun to see. You'll get to see a lot of that new spring foliage. And I think it's one of the most magical times at the nursery. It's really, it's when everything looks its most unique. Yeah. I, mean, I know that's when Brian's out there. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we pretty much going to have Corbin editing videos and Brian out there with the camera because Brian <laughs> has made our website so much better last year. And Brian gets out there and works his magic with photography. And we get, you know, photos of the new stuff that might not even be on the website yet. Yeah. So we're always adding to. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm always enjoying that, getting to discover new cultivars that we haven't made available yet. Mm -hmm. um, but in, in part of the process of preparing to make it available is get, capturing those photos so we can demonstrate what this plan is all about, creating a page for the website. So I, I get into all of that. And that's a big part of what I do to try to help uh, with the, with our marketing and, and getting things available to you guys. So, uh, man, we really appreciate this. Guys, I, I appreciate you coming in to yeah. the live chat. We plan on doing more of these. We love doing live Q&As. And uh, we've been doing them at 11.05. That just gives some of our our uh, staff time to get things going, too. Yeah. So 11.05 will probably be our time to try to jump in. I'll try to always at least post something in our Facebook group or on our YouTube channel or on my Facebook channel, you know, page just to kind of let you guys know and give a heads up when we're going to be able to. Sometimes things are so busy here, there's no chance, but... Wanted to hop on here today and hopefully give you guys some advice and some reassurance and, uh, you know, some camaraderie for the upcoming cold snap we're going to have. So be prepared. Yeah. And again, Brian shared the video from last year that we shot. I think both are great videos, how to prepare for a frost and how to prepare for a cold snap. So a little bit different, but similar techniques. Uh, but you can go watch those videos if you want some good advice. Definitely secure whatever you're covering with down. You don't want to tie it too tight to your plant. Um, you know, I've duct taped, you know, a towel to itself before or something like that. Uh, a small rope or something is fine. You don't want to be digging into your plant with it. You want to get it off quickly. So be yeah. conscious of making it something you can remove easily. But you do want to secure them down. Uh, oftentimes when we're having frost, uh, you know, you'll have some winds and it'll blow those things off the night before, something like that. One good thing is if you're having wind and you're worried about frost on this time, uh, wind does tend to break up the frost a little bit. So you tend to not have as much, uh, frost image if there's a windy day. Yeah. Uh, like I said, Matt, uh, we, we posted some links, uh, to the other videos about cold snaps and frost. Also, if you just joined in the live chat here, you can always go back and rewatch this video too, as we talk about just some of the, uh, different te techniques and advice, uh, regarding these cold snaps coming in. We really appreciate all of you guys joining us today. Yeah, definitely go check it out. That'll be in the Mr. Maple Friends group on Facebook. So if you're new to our channel or page, we have the Mr. Maple Facebook, uh, Mr. Maple Friends on Facebook. That's a group you can join. Yep. Uh, share photos of your gardens or just uh, share in camaraderie or ask questions. We love your questions. Throw them in the comment section below. We've got a ton of crazy content. Brian's about to go work on Momiji Tempura. Yeah. So if you want to learn about fried maple leaves, we'll be working on that <laughs> one for you. Some footage from Japan. But I, I appreciate you guys being part of our channel. I appreciate uh, your participation in it, too. And if you think we've earned it, definitely give us a subscribe. Take care. God bless. Have a great day.